Welcome back to the small stuff. Welcome to the small stuff. Welcome to the small stuff. Welcome back to the small stuff. One of the things we know from standing in front of a room is that silence can be uncomfortable. One of the things that was discovered through research in the 1970s and then repeated and rediscovered or confirmed in the 1990s is that there is a direct relationship between how long we pause after a question is asked and the impact on learning of having asked that question. It was discovered that at least three seconds is needed in order for learning to occur because it's during that period of silence that people are thinking. However, in the same studies during the 90s, it was found that across classrooms, the average length of time that there was a pause was less than one second. It's worth thinking about. Something else to consider here is that there are two types of thinkers. There are the ones that we can count on when we want to ask a question that we know we're going to get the right answer to. These are the people we call on because they are external thinkers. These are the people who, they don't take long thinking before they wish to start talking because they're processing the information in their brains, coming up with the answer by speaking. However, we also have a second type of thinker who are often overlooked. These are our internal thinkers. They are going through exactly the same mental process as our external thinkers, but it's happening inside, up here. So what can happen is, in order to meet the needs of these people and our, overcome our own discomfort with silence, is we can interrupt the thinking that is happening over here by allowing these people to be processing verbally too soon. What to do? A recommendation is that if we're asking a question that is, has any meaning other than simple quick recount, then allow students 10, 15 seconds. Feel free to get into the habit of having a timepiece, a watch or a phone, or even just using the second hand and say, okay, ask the question, we'll have 15 seconds. Watch the clock, watch the room. You'll be able to look for nonverbal cues to find those people who are perhaps struggling with either understanding what the question is or how to process it. And at the end of that time, you will actually have a much broader range of people who you can depend upon to draw out the answer because you will have given the internal thinkers of your classroom sufficient time to also process the information, which also means you've given them time to learn. But regardless of the issue of equity there, by giving everyone time, you're giving everyone that opportunity to learn more fully. Try it out, let us know how you go.